this lecture i would like to discuss on java encryption decryption so when you think about the encryption and decryption you you know there are two types of encryption schemes available what we call it as symmetric key encryption and asymmetric key encryption first let's have a look on symmetric key encryption in the symmetric key encryption we have a data we use a key to encrypt the data and we use the same key for the decryption so everybody knows about it right now when you use such symmetric key encryption we are using two types of cryptographic classes we call them as cipher class and cipher stream class so in order to generate the security keys for these classes we use key generator class in addition in addition to these cipher classes symmetric key encryption can be used to handle ssl network communications as well so we we'll let's have a look uh, first how to handle the encryption and decryption using cipher class as i mentioned when you want to do any encryption the first step should be generate the security key in java we want to use such symmetric key encryption there is a class called key generator class so we need to get the instance of such key generator so using uh, by calling the get instance method so constructor of this get instance method we need to give the algorithm name like this a is or whatever so it returns the corresponding key generator so in that key generator we can call the generate key method so that returns the key object so that key object can be used to handle the encryption and the decryption as you know when you use symmetric key encryption we have security operational modes so we discuss several modes you, you i think you might remember them uh, electronic code book uh, cyber blockchaining mode cbc ecb and so on as the simplest mode of operation is cbc uh, ecb electronic code book mode in there we divide the data into a, a, a different blocks and feed those blocks to the encryption algorithm if the algorithm is this the block size is 8 byte if the algorithm is a is block size is 16 bytes so in the last block usually we do padding in order to handle this uh, simple encryption and decryption in the java so we get the support of two classes first one is the key generator class where we generate the symmetric key then we need the help from the cipher class we get the instance of the cipher class when you get the instance we have to give the uh, algorithm name so then uh, after that we input our data using the method called update available in the cipher class so since this uh, modern encryption algorithms are the block ciphers our plain text data may not match to the block size then what's happen Uh, when you feed the data so the, uh, the system will feed the data equal to the block size and whatever the remaining will keep it in the buffer so after we feed all the data using update method finally you have to call a method called do find this do final method will do the padding of the last block and then return the final block of the encryption then we can send this data to the, our recipient in the recipient side we have to use the same algorithm uh, and then feed the same symmetric key for the algorithm and then we update the data after we update the data basically we call basically decryption methods uh, in the update by call the update method it's do the decryption so in the last block in order to get the last block we need to call the do final method then it returns the last block so if you have one set of data like a small size of the data we can directly call do final instead of 
calling update method. So then the other popular mode of uh, data encryption is cipher block chaining mode. In the cipher block chaining mode, we are using an additional input called initial vector in addition to the key. So this initial vector is size of initial vector is equal to the size of the block. So uh, when you use this ECBC mode, usually initial vector will be randomly generated. So these are the steps we should usually follow in this CBC mode. In the first step, we need to get the instance of the cipher. So we call the algorithm name and the block mo blocking mode and the padding scheme. So when you get the instance of the cipher, we need to give the algorithm name, the block cipher modes and the padding scheme. It returns the cipher object. Then we have to initialize the cipher object with encryption or the decryption mode. So if you do the encryption, we initialize it with the encryption mode and give the key. And then we update the data uh, in uh, till we finish it. So after we finish the data, we call the two final. Each call, we get the encrypted data back. The encrypted data return data block is usually equal to the block size. So when you do like that, so initial vector will automatically generate. So in the decryption, since we need the initial vector, we have to call get IV and save the initial vector. So at then the recipient side, we need to load the same instance of the algorithm using cipher.get instance method. And then we need to use a specific method called this parameter specification and pass the IV we save, initial vector we save. Uh, and then we need to initialize the cipher in the decryption mode with the key and then obviously with this parameter specification that has the initial vector in it. So after initialize the cipher for the encryption, we could call the update method with encrypted data. It returns back the cipher test. Final block can be returned, removing the padding by calling the to final. So that's how we do encryption and the decryption. Uh, in addition to this uh, cipher method, there is a, a method called cipher stream method. So there are two types of stream we can see. We call it as cipher output stream and cipher input stream. When you write the data, we, when you encrypt and write data, we usually use cipher output stream. When you want to de decrypt and read the data, we use cipher input stream. So basically we have to wrap that cipher input to output stream in the other low level streams. And then encryption and decryption is simply reading and writing from those streams. So when you want to write, read and write those streams, uh, we have to uh, uh, call a close method of the stream. When you call the close method, basically it do the final padding. So it, if you have any uh, stream such as which handles the streams which handles the automatic data flush should not be used because if those streams when they flush the data so the uh, cipher stream may think the data is over and may do padding because of that we will get padding at the middle so it should not do that you have to use the method uh, which don't have auto flush and close it at the end. After encryption and decryption, we can uh, use uh, uh, some encryption techniques to protect the objects. Uh, so, you know, in Java, we can uh, say, serialize and save objects in the files. So while we serialize and save objects, someone can in initiate those objects and get the data, which is in, inside of those objects. So if you want to uh, protect that, while we are writing those objects into the file, we can encrypt and write them. So such an encrypted object, we call it as sealed object. So those sealed objects is something, how do you do that sealing? It's a, uh, in the following steps. So first of all, we have to again get the 
instance of the key generator. And we need to initialize this key generator of the uh, given size and then call generate key method and get a symmetric key for C in the object. So then using get instance method, we need to get the cipher where we go going to use for this encryption. It is usually AES or DES. Then we initialize this cipher in the encrypted mode with the key we generated here. So after that, we may have some objects where we want to serialize. And then what we do, we call the object called seal object by giving the object we want to see, uh, seal with the cipher. So then it uh, gets automatically encrypted. So this seal object then can be write it to the file. Similarly, if you want to unsee those objects, that means you want to read those data. So what you have to do is you get the objects from the file and then get, uh, using this get object method, uh, you pass the key, so security key. So this security key, using the security key, this object will automatically deserialize and decrypt and deserialize, and you can get back the, uh, get back the, data or the object data and the object obviously All right so that's usually how we do the symmetric key encryption so uh, uh, you know there is another type of encryption decryption available obviously signing verification as well with the symmetric key system if you use a symmetric key system there are two keys which we use so we call it as uh, symmetric key, uh, public key, and the private key. So in Java, there are two ways of generating those keys. Obviously, uh, we can generate it using a, a program like key generator class. In order to generate public private key, keys, there is a class called key pair generator class. We can use that key pair generator class. Or else, Java provides a command line tool called key tool. So using this key tool, you can create public private keys. I will create a separate video on how to use those key tools and how to create keys based on this key tool. I will uh, demonstrate. So we can generate those keys using the key tool or either using key pair method. When you store those keys in the Java, Java uses a file called it as key store file. It has a specific format called JKS Java uh, key uh, format. Uh, recently, it seems Java has changed that to the standard format. Standard way of storing those security key follows the format called it as public key cryptography number 12 or pkcs 12 format pkcs 12 is the standard way of storing the keys so when you store those keys in this pkcs 12 file there is a nickname be given using a field for alias and then we need to give the private keys store the private keys and the public key associated with that in the file. In addition to that, we can store trusted certificates also within the file. So then using the program, there is a class called key store class. Using that, we can open this file and access those keys and process the encryption and decryption. I will show how to do that uh, using some demonstration. As I mentioned, in the Java key stores, usually stores keys uh, private keys, public keys, uh, public keys stored in the public key certificate format. So there is a class available in Java called key store class. Using that, actually, we can read write to this file. So in addition to that, this key tool, command line tool, can be used to access this file. And then there is a command called jar signer. So we can use that jar signer tool uh, to digitally sign the documents as well. This jar signer can also access this uh, key store file. Uh, so using the key tool, if you want to generate this uh, public private key pairs, you have to use key tool uh, gen key option. So similarly, there are several options to list the key, export the keys, import the keys, print public keys, and so and so. 
So if you want, you can use key tool to generate the keys and export what we call it as certificate request. So that can be done using key tool minus certificate request option. So then uh, that certificate request you can submit to any commercial GA and then uh, obtain a public key certificate from that commercial CA. So that certificate can be then import back to your uh, key store. So I will do a demo on that. So uh, let's move on. Uh, so when you want to import keys to a Java key store, so first of all, you need to store the certification authority public key and make that key as the trusted public key. After that, you can import any uh, public keys or uh, certified by this particular certification authority. Uh, so like that, uh, you can uh, uh, generate, uh, export, import keys from these key, key stores, uh, key store files. So as I mentioned, uh, there is a tool available called Jar signer using this jar signer, so you can uh, digitally sign any document. So, first of all, before you sign the documents, you need to create a jar file. You know, jar is the archiving format which is used by the Java. So, there is a tool available with the Java called jar. Using jar minus CVF, we can create the archive file. So, after we create the archive using jar signer, we can uh, digitally sign this file. So as I mentioned, I will do, I will demo it uh, later on with a separate video. So, so in the Java programs, if you want to uh, write programs where you do encryption and decryption, so you need to use a, a class called Keystore class. Keystore class has necessary methods to manipulate the data in this key store. So you can read them, you can store the keys, you can load the keys and so on. So I'll show you those in the demo in a minute. So using key store, if you want to initiate the key store, you have to use a method called get instance method. So you have to use key store dot get instance and then give the uh, key store type and then the uh, key store provider. So usually Java has a JKS key store provided by Sun, but uh, I noticed that recently they have changed that format into PKCS12 or the P2L. PKC, PKCS12 is the standard format to store in the key. So Sun decided to perhaps use that. So then you need to get the instance of the PKCS12 store uh, and you can use the cryptographic provider name here, Sun, No, Bouncy Castle, whatever the name, and then load the key store. After we load the key store here, uh, you can create a uh, file input or output stream uh, to the file. So if your key store name is key, you open a file input stream to read the keys. And then using this key store object, you call the method load. When you call the method load in this keys object, you need to give a file input stream and then the password which used to open this file. So after you call that, key store will be loaded into the computer memory. So then uh, similarly, uh, so when you want to then uh, save the keys, you have to use the uh, file output stream and then uh, you need to uh, put the password and then uh, call the store methods to save the keys which is in the memory. So not only signing and uh, not only reading and writing, uh, it provides the methods to delete the keys, then uh, kind of uh, set certificates entries and so on. There is a rich set of methods available in the key store class. Uh, key store Java class to manipulate uh, the key store files. As I mentioned, uh, so using those methods, we can do various things like we can get the keys, we can get the certificates, 
we can get cervical strains available in this case too. So we will uh, try to uh, clarify or we we'll learn how to do that with some examples. All right. At last, I would like to mention that uh, Java has methods uh, of uh, streams available to handle uh, encrypted communication. For example, if you want to talk to the TLS web server, so you can create a TLS client or using Java very easily. So then you connect to this server. So these TLS clients will automatically connect uh, to the servers and then uh, we can obtain, uh, obtain basically uh, the web pages. Uh, or the content from the servers. There is a socket streams, TLS socket streams available to handle that. Okay, with that, uh, I can move on to the demo. So in the demo, I will show you how to uh, handle these uh, uh, things which we discuss using the programs. Let's move to the demo now. I use Atom editor uh, to uh, handle this demonstration and let's start with some simple uh, examples. Let's see how to do the encryption and decryption. So using the simplest mode, what we call it as ECB mode. This sample file shows how to do that. Obviously we need to import uh, the Java security and Java cryptographic uh, classes at the beginning of this program. Uh, then after import that, you see, I have some data to be encrypted. So my data to be encrypted, uh, let's say hello at the beginning. Uh, hello, I need to encrypt hello. Then maybe I will use the uh, encryption algorithm DES uh, to do the encryption. And in the DES algorithm has 56 bit keys, right? So then I call the, uh, when I call the get, generate key generator get instance method, it returns the uh, key generator of the desk type. And the size of the key is 56. And when you call generate method, it returns the key object, which equals to 56 bit. And then I have to get the algorithm. So I, since it is this, I get the algorithm this, uh, and then we need to give the mode AI, yeah, select the mode ECB, and then the padding scheme, PKCS7 padding. And then I initialize the encryption to the encryption mode with the key generated here. And I have the, the only one block of the data that is hello. Because of that, I'm not calling update method. Instead, I calling do final method with that data. So it returns the uh, encrypted object. So using these two lines, I print them on the terminal. So after that, I do the decryption also in this program. So where you see, I do, I initialize the same cipher then in the decryption mode with the same key. In the symmetry key encryption, same key will be used to encrypt and decrypt. So my cipher text generated here, I pass it to the define method, which is initialized in the decryption mode. So this method will return the plain text back. So that will complete the decryption. So then decrypted data, I will print it here and I will print the uh, plain text size after decrypt. And also I print the ciphertext size where you can see uh, the uh, difference between this plain text and the ciphertext due to the padding. Uh, let's try to uh, compile this program uh, and uh, execute that. I'll change the directory uh, to this uh, directory that is encrypt. Right, and then I run, I compile this uh, program ecb.java. It get compiled and then I run that program. So you see my plain text here, hello, will be encrypted to eight byte uh, data block. So as you may remember, a desk operates in eight byte blocks. So even the data is five bytes. So there is a uh, padding and after padded, it equal to the block size of the desk cipher that is uh, uh, eight bytes. So now uh, let me change the size of the uh, input. So maybe instead of hello, I say hello one, two, three. Uh, so then my plain text size become eight bytes. 
So if you remember the PKCS5 heading scheme, so if the uh, data is equal to the block size, it completely adds the new block. So let's see whether it happens. So I run the program now. You see, now I have the eight byte inputs. My ciphertext becomes 16 because it's at the completely new block. So like that, the size of the data will be changed. So if I change the size of the data to the 16 byte, so my ciphertext becomes uh, 24 bytes. So I will show that. Let me now compile it uh, back and then run the program. So you see, it become uh, my input size is 16 bytes. So my output ciphertext size is uh, 24 bytes. Uh, so it's changed with uh, eight byte data blocks. Right, I will change the algorithm now and change what's happened. So now I change the algorithm to uh, A, yes. So size of the key is 256 bit, recommended key size. So I'm using the uh, Cypher, A, yes, Cypher, in the same mode with PKCS5 padding. I have a 16 byte of input. So the block size of the AES algorithm is 16 bytes. So when I encrypt the 16 byte of A uh, data with 16 byte block size of AES algorithm, it will add a completely new block. So because of that, uh, plain text size should change to 32 bytes. So you see that that's happened. My 16 byte input, it created 32 byte ciphertext output. That's how in very simply, cyber uh, block chaining mode or the ECB won't work. So you know there are several other modes like CBC, uh, uh, CRT, and so on. So this example, this simple example shows how the CBC works. Here I use the data again, and then uh, generate a method. Uh, is uh, key is AES key. Size AES has different key sizes. Here I use 128 bit key size. And here, what I do, instead of actually using the, uh, uh, after generating the key, you see here I am generating the initial vector. Because uh, CBC mode, we need to have initial vector or what you call initial value as well. So I using a secure random generator, I generate an initial value to be used in this encryption. And then I get the instance of Cypher as usual and initialize in the encryption mode. There I used to, there I should input the key plus the initial vector value, uh, which is in the uh, format of IV parameter specification. So simply I call the do final, which return the ciphertext. So again, then I print those ciphertexts and I initialize the same cipher in the decryption mode where I have to use the same key and the same initial vector values and then call the do final with the cipher set text, it get decrypted. Uh, let me compile this program and run it and show you how it works. CBC Java. And then run the Java CBC. You see it's same as previous. Uh, the ciphertext size increase with the similar to the block size. I have the data five bytes, then the AES block size is 16. I get the 16 byte of output. So that's how uh, CBC modes works. Uh, now let's uh, try to uh, uh, check uh, the CRT mode, uh, counter mode. Usually when you encryption or when you convert the block cipher into the string cipher, counter mode is more popular. So when you do Wi-Fi communication with your device to the access point, we use counter mode. So here, let's see how counter mode works. So you see, I have the same data to be encrypted in this counter mode. I get the AES cipher. Uh, and initialize it in this 256 bit key size and I generate the key here. Then I use a initial vector to generate counters, initial vector to generate counters. So I get the secure random generator and then generate the initial vector and then I initialize it to, uh, uh, initialize that initial vector into the initial vector specification object. 
So I get the instance of the cipher, then with AES algorithm, CTR mode. In the CTR mode, we don't do padding usually. So because it's convert this uh, to the stream cipher, so we are not doing any padding here to demonstrate that. Uh, so because of that, we use no padding as the last last option. So then I do the encryption with the key and the initial vector and call the do final, we'll do the encryption. Similarly, I initialize the cipher into the decryption mode and then call the do final method to de do, uh, decrypt the data. And I print the decrypted data here as well after decrypt. Now let me compile this CTR program. And then, uh, then run that. So you see, I, I use five bytes of data uh, and then do the encryption, it creates the five bytes of data uh, because we are using CTR mode, uh, simple CTR mode, counter, uh, counter mode for the encryption uh, in this uh, uh, with no padding because it don't do any padding. So our plain text size, it's uh, uh, similar to the uh, cyber text size. Right, uh, now let's show you some other example uh, that is a GCM, uh, Galois counter mode. So in the GCM mode, we usually call it as authenticated encrypt encryption. Actually, most of the Wi-Fi, uh, in, uh, one of the Wi-Fi protocol called WPA2 use this GCM. So there we have the data here and we have some additional authenticated data, like our IP address feeded into the encryption. So then it do the encryption as well as it calculate the authenticated code, uh, where we can check the integrity of the data packet at the other side. So this is the data we want to add for the authentication. So this data will go as plain text. So this data will encrypt and feed it to the algorithm. So they are in how that mode works. Obviously, first of all, we need to get the instance of the algorithm and generate the key. And then we initialize the initial vector. It requires the initial vector as well. And then we get the algorithm. Now you see I'm getting the AES in the GCM mode with no padding. And I update the, I initialize the cipher into the encryption mode with the key and the initial vector. After that, you see I add the update the authenticated data. So this authenticated data added to the cipher. Then I call do final with the data to be encrypted. If I have multiple multiple blocks, we need to call update method here. So it returns the cipher text, encrypted data, encryption of this plus the authentication code, right? So then here, the decryption pass, so we do the uh, uh, initialize the cipher in the decryption mode now, and then we update the uh, authenticated data we receive, and then feed the cipher text to the algorithm. It returned the plain text, uh, and I printed them them here. Let me uh, uh, compile and run that program GCM mode. GCM, sorry. So you see, uh, I have the data. This is 10 bytes of data. Uh, plain text length is uh, 10 bytes, right? Five by 10 bytes. And my output is 26 bytes. So why that happens? Because it create a 10 byte of data, it's create a 16 byte of cybertext, and then it added uh, uh, 10 byte of data, sorry, 10 byte of data, create the 10 byte of ciphertext uh, since we don't do any padding. So it's in ciphertext size is 10 byte. So we added uh, authenticated block. The length of the authenticated block is equal to the block size. That is 16 byte. Then 10 plus 16 ciphertext become 26. This is consists of the encrypted data plus authenticated tag. Uh, so let me change the, uh, uh, data maybe uh, to 16 bytes and then uh, run the same program after compiling. 
So when you run that, you see now I have 11 bytes of data and then the ciphertext uh, size become 27, 11 plus 16. So because I use no padding, ciphertext size is equal to the plain text size, but it added the authenticated tag. Uh, so it then uh, 16 bytes authenticated tag. That's why ciphertext is larger, uh, is size of ciphertext is 27 bytes. So that's how basic encryption and decryption works in the different uh, modes. Now let's have a look on uh, streaming, how that streaming happens. Uh, for that, uh, I uh, wrote two programs. One is encrypted encrypt.java, other one is uh, decryption Java, decryption.java and encryption.java. Uh, These are the two programs, encrypt Java and decrypt Java. So let's have a look on the encrypt Java program. So there I kind of hard code my input and output parameters, file names, my input file that is plain text file is picture.jpg. My output file is out.jpg. So if you wish, you can give the input file name and output file name as command line parameter as well in this program. After that, what I do, I use, uh, uh, system console read password method to get a password from the user prompt. So I will generate a key based on this password. So how do I do that? I get the password here, you see, and then I initialize the key generator. The algorithm is SHA1 uh, random generator. And then I feed the password. I get the bytes out of this character password, which I entered on the terminal. I guess a byte of that and feed it to this random generator. Then I, uh, let's say I want to create a 128 bit of AES key. So I need 128 divided by eight bytes byte array to store that. So I create such byte array and call the next byte method available in this random generator with that byte array. So then we will get a random number uh, to this byte array. So I name that random number as the AES key using the object called sacred key specification object. So then I ended up with the AES key, which generated based on the uh, password, right? The next thing is I need to get the instance of the algorithm. So there I get the AES algorithm in the ECB mode with the PKCS5 padding, right? Uh, the SIP algorithm. Then I initialize the SIP algorithm in the encryption mode with this key which I enter. So now the SIP is ready. What I now I want to do is encrypt the file. So how do I do that? So have a careful look. First of all, I need to open a file to be encrypted using the file input string uh, constructor. So I am creating an object called file input stream. Sorry, I, sorry, here I am creating object called file output stream and open uh, uh, output file. On the top here, I am creating a file input stream uh, uh, called FIS. So file input stream, using file input stream class, I am creating object of file input stream so the in, uh, so given the input file name and i create a file output stream object by giving the output file name so then so this stream is read to used to read the plain text file uh, this stream will used to write the encrypted data so that's how uh, i set it, set up the files to be read and write so after that i create a, a uh, stream called cyber output stream, cyber output stream. Entire encryption decryption happens in this cyber output stream. So for this cyber output stream constructor, take the file output stream object and the cyber object. So, so then what's, how do you do the encryption? After we set it up those streams, actually encryption happens in this cycle. What I do here, I get a byte array, that is my buffer, which size, any size I here get the buffer with eight bytes. And then I read eight bytes from the file input stream using the read method. So then what I do, I write that eight byte using B. Uh, B is actually uh, data to be right from zero to eight. How many data? 
is read written by i i write that to the cypher output stream ce output so what i do is simply i read from there and write to there so when i write to the cypher output stream what using this ce out dot write method what happened this binary data goes to the cypher output stream and within the cypher output put stream it will be encrypted and then further write back to the file output stream object because uh, cypher output stream wrap the file output stream object you see here so to write to the file output stream and finally to the hard disk file so in a while loop i do that after i write the first block so you see i read the second block from the input stream and then if it is not equal to the end of the file i write that and then i read from the file input stream write to the cypher output stream read from the file input stream write to the file output stream until the file is over so finally i call the uh, close the cypher output stream that completed this encryption so then i have encrypted file created on the hard disk so after that uh, using this uh, file object i open the input file and call the delete method on top available in this file object that will delete my plain text file so that's how basically i do the encryption and decryption uh, of the file so it is simply reading from the input stream and then writing to the object called uh, stream called cypher output stream object so let me run this encryption and show you that so assume we have this uh, uh, file called picture jpeg here this file so this file i am going to encrypt right so you see uh, picture file is there in the same folder so i uh, compile my encrypt uh, dot java Uh, program and then run the encrypt method. Uh, so it has actually a password. I type a password to execute in the encrypt method. So you see my file encrypted. So disappeared here. So here it, there are no picture file so far. Now I have a file called output jpeg. Even it call it as jpeg, it is a encrypted file. Right. Now let's see the decryption. So this is my decrypted file, a decryption program. So in the decryption program, uh, again I set my input and output stream. Uh, now I'm going to uh, decrypt. So my input stream is then encrypted file name that is output JPEG, which is here. My output file is the picture file. I want to produce uh, the site uh, plain text file again. So my output is now picture JPEG. Right. If I wish, I can give the command line parameters as well. Simply, for simplicity, I hard coded those input and output file names on the top. Right. So then, uh, these lines, as usual, read the password from the console, and then using that password, I am creating the key. So if I use the same password, actually, it create the same key. So that's how secure random number or the pseudo random number. Generators works. If that seed or random generator is initiated with the same seed values, it always create the same key. So I, with after calling those methods, it will create the uh, key. So that will be used for decryption. So I call it as decryption key. So then I do what I do. I get the instance of the cipher, same cipher. And then initialize with the decryption mode with this decryption key. So I use CB ECB, so there are no initial vector values needed here. Uh, right. So then what I do then I input I set up my input and output stream. So this is file input stream, uh, and I pass my input file name that is uh, uh, encrypted file. So here I set it up cipher out. Uh, my here my uh, set it up cypher input stream which wrap this file input stream so i have the encrypted file so which uh, open by the file input stream and then after that i link that to the cypher input stream right so now cypher input stream at the encryption it was cypher output stream right now i create a file output stream where i want to write the plain text so then what i do i again read and write from the blocks so in the opposite 
way. So for example, I create a byte array here and I am reading from now cyber input stream. So when I call read method in the cyber input stream, what's happened? Some data will come from the file input stream to the cyber input stream at the cyber input stream, that data will be automatically decrypted and then plain text will pass us to the byte array. So then what's happened? I write that plain text or the decrypted data to the file output stream. So after I write the first block, I read the second block uh, of the data and then come back here. If that is not empty or it's not the end of the data, it, I write that. Like that, I read from the cyber input stream and write to the file output stream in a loop until I hit the end of file character. So then uh, what happens, all the data in the cyber stream will read, decrypt, and then write to the plain text file. After I produce the plain text file, here in this line, I delete my cyber text file as in the previous case. Now let's, let me compile my decrypt.com java uh, uh, sorry it's java c i compile it uh, then i run the java, java decryption program so it asked the password to enter i hope i wrote this uh, enter the same password so you see i get the plain text file back so that's how the decryption works. So you see now in these two simple programs, uh, encryption, uh, here the encryption uh, and then decryption, I can simply encrypt and write uh, decrypt files. So it can be any file, uh, uh, image file or word file or even a video. So these two simple programs can be used for uh, do that, right. That conclude my demonstration on simple encryption and decryption using symmetric key cryptography. Now let's have a look how to handle the encryption and decryption using public key cryptography. Uh, for that, uh, I start the demonstration with uh, signing. So I think I did this, discuss last week as well. So public key mainly used for digitally sign and verify the documents. So here the difference is in the previous example, I create the keys. Uh, uh, using the key pair generator methods. So here I show you in this simple program, what I do, I use a keys to a file. Those keys to a file uh, consist of my keys. So basically the standard format of keys to is PKS2 is 12 keys to. I have pre-generated public private key pairs store in a file called keys to dot p 2 So that file is in the same folder you see. So that file, it's in the format of P, uh, binary format is called as public key cryptography standard number 12 or the PKCS12 format. So that file I generated using key tool. Uh, so uh, now I read that uh, keys from this file uh, and then use those key to sign a, a data and I demonstrate how to verify it as well in the same program. So how do I do that? So first of all, I need to get the instance of this key store. So now I say I want to use PKCS12 type key store. And then I have to open a file input stream uh, to this file, simply this file, and then pass the password to open that, right? Open this uh, file, All right? Uh, my password actually uh, um, is password. You see my password is hard coded, that is password, uh, which encrypted this uh, P12 file by using this uh, password called password, P A S S W T. I get the character out of that and I use that password and then file input stream passes that uh, to the load method of keystore. So then uh, keystore, object, let's call it as p2l, p2l.load will you load the key store to the memory. So now I need to get the keys. Uh, each key is usually encrypted with a password. So in order to get the key, I call the get key method 
and I have to give a, a nickname for the tag which I assign for this particular key, call it as, it, it is called as alias. So this key alias here in this key store file is my key. So I put that nickname and I put the password to access the key store and call the method get key. So get key method will returns me the key from this uh, key store file. So I convert that key to a private key. So I will get the private key out of that key then, right? So I have a private key object. So using now this private key object, I can uh, set up, set it up the signature. So what I do, I create the signature dot get instance method. So, and this is my signing algorithm. Signing algorithm, you know, the combination of hashing and the public key cryptography algorithm. The hash in here, I use SHA 256 hash with the RSA. So that is my hashing algorithm. I get the instance of hashing algorithm uh, to the uh, signature uh, and uh, put in this instance of hashing algorithm, I get the signature object. So I initialize this signature object with the private key here, as you see. So then this is the data to be signed. I update that data to the signature object. I use the method update to update the data to the signature method. All the data to be updated in the binary format. So that's why I call message dot with bytes, right? After update the data, I call the sign methods available in the signature object. It creates the digital signature of this data. The private keys read from this key store file, right? So this signature I just printed here on the terminal. So now let's see how do I do the verification. In order to verify that, <coughs> I need to access that person's public key, right? So for that, what I do, I get the instance of the certificate. Public keys store in this key stores in the format of certificates. So I get the instance of the certificate with tag as my key uh, from the P12 key store. So it is in the format of X509 certificate. I cast it to the object called X509 certificate. So this X509 certificate consists of the public key. So from that certificate, I call the method get public key that returns me the public key of this person. So then I initialize the signature object with this public key. Actually signature object I created get here. So I initialize it using the public key. So in practically this verification happens in the other side. So it should be in the separate object or the separate method. I do it in the same program for simplicity. So I verify for initial, the, initialize the signature. Uh, I initialize the signature object into verify uh, mode, right? So then assume this is the data received in the verification end, I get the byte of this data and update to the signature object. After that, I call the signature.verify method with the signature of the original signature created here, original signature. So that verify methods returns true or false. If the signature verifies, it will return true, otherwise it return false. So this program to be uh, compiled with the bouncy castle provider because those key stores <coughs> methods and this RSA signing those methods are not available with sun operator, the sun provider. We have to use bouncy castle cryptographic provider. So because of that, we need to compile the program by giving the bouncy castle libraries as a uh, to the class path like that. I call it Java C. CP is class path. I give the bouncy castle jar, which is already downloaded into my uh, uh, computer. And then by using this jar, I compile this sign. Uh, so it's get uh, compile, I guess. So where do I do? Okay, I didn't change the directory. Uh, I have to change the directory to key store, right? 
then I compile my program right so then I have to run that program also with this boxy cousin provider so you see it create the RSA signature and say verification success let me let me uh, uh, let's say I receive the message without this uh, question mark and then what's happened so I recompile the program right and then run that so you see then it's a verification fail right because I received the different object so that's how we can read the private key from the key store and sign it and read the certificate from the key store and verifies it all right so this is about sign now let's say I have a look encryption RSA algorithm can be used for encryption as well as decryption so in the encryption basically we use the public key of the recipient and the decryption we use the private key of the recipient opposite of signing so here in this example show how do we use RSA to directly encrypt and decrypt the data here again my data to be encrypted it has this message and I get the instance of RSA here I get the RSA algorithm with uh, operational mode is no, no, no operational mode so usually encryption when you do encryption with RSA it should be uh, encrypted data should be less than the key size whatever and so it's, uh, then we do a PKCS5 padding with the RSA encryption so I do no operation, planning operation, uh, block operations because it's a symmetric key algorithm, but it has some padding called PKCS1 padding, right? So here I access the key store uh, called JKS key store. So now in this example, my uh, keys are st storing in a file called key. So it is in the uh, same folder, I guess. Uh, so this is a uh, key store file. Uh, there should be a file called uh, key here in this uh, folder. Uh, if not, I can use that uh, key store file as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, so what I running is RS encryption, right? Uh, so it use uh, this. Uh, you get the so what you do is now going to do the uh, uh, encryption because because of that you need to have a public key from that key store basically <coughs> I am getting the uh, public key certificate now as you see here right uh, and then here in the decryption you see here uh, I get the uh, private key RSA private key right so opposite of that so maybe I change to since I don't have this uh, key file here uh, I change uh, to this uh, file key store.p2 uh, file uh, so let me see this is RSA encryption so my file is uh, store dot p twelve and uh, and I get the instance of that and password is same. Uh, sorry, here I need to uh, give that to here. So this is the file name, uh, right? Uh, this is the file name, and then the store type is p twelve, like in the sign class. You see, store type is PKC is to it. Uh, that is the store type. Here we have to give the store type P2. Right. So that loads uh, the keys to and get the instance of <coughs> the public key. Right. So after I get the public key, actually I print this public key on the terminal. So this public key object has a two string method. So because of that, I just can pass the public key certificate object to the print and then it print the public key read from this uh, file, right? 
and from this public key certificate which printed here actually i get the public key out by calling get public key method it returns the public key so then i uh, initialize this cipher object which created uh, here cipher object created here so in this cipher object is, uh, is initialized in the encryption mode with this given public key so then i call the do final method with the byte it returns me the encrypted data so i print them on the terminal right so in this is how we do the decryption so i in the decryption i need to again access this key store and uh, get the private key for that i use the method get key here i use the method uh, uh, get uh, certificate right get certificate method so here get certificate method returns the public key get key method returns the private key so i get the private key for i have to give a password of the keys too and i get the rsa private key object so then cipher method will initialize in the decryption mode with that private key so after that what i do i call do final with the cipher it returns me the plain text so i just print that uh, plain text on the terminal now let's encrypt and decrypt uh, run this uh, rsa encryption program I compile it with the bounce castle because RSA encryption is support only by the bouncy castle provider. Uh, key store is supported by the sun provider, it doesn't matter. So I compile that. Uh, so then I run the program using this option. Uh, it says uh, key no such file in the directory actually ah, i forgot to save it uh, so i changed the my file name key to key store so i have to compile it back right? uh, and then uh, run the program so you see it uh, read the public key certificate store in this key store so this is the uh, my subject that is uh, the public key certificates available uh, in this uh, uh, file issued to me by this issuer is uh, kind of uh, uh, issued to me uh, it is a kind of self-signed certificate uh, so uh, it encrypted test is this uh, then it decrypt back to the plain text on the same problem so that's how uh, simply we use RSA encryption and decryption. Similarly, I can show you some other examples. Uh, maybe I show you uh, two programs. In, so here, RSA encryption decryption happens in the same program, right? In practically, you, it should be two programs, no? one side will do the encryption other side will do the decryption so in this program encryption only shows the encrypted uh, data encryption part so here what's happened you see uh, so i use the bouncy castle provider here directly and get the instance of the cipher and here what i do i uh, read the public key i read the public key from a file called set my set dot dr file so it get the instance of this uh, file input stream and then i wrap it in the buffer input stream and get the object called certificate factory object so using the certificate factory object i get the i get, generate the certificates store in this file called certificate dr so certificate stored in this binary file so that public key is usually distributed with the public key certificates so if let's say i want to receive some encrypted data i would like to receive some encrypted data then i have to export my public key from the uh, key store and then give that public key to my recipient so my recipient actually access this public key file and then get the instance of the certificate out of this file using this x509 certificate object and use that uh, certificate to get the public key 
So I print the circularity equation here and then get public key method will return the public key out of that certificate. It's here in this my set DR file. Right. After that, what I do, I just read a message from the terminal. So I can type some message to be sent to my recipient in the encrypted format. <coughs> I type that message. Right. So then I initialize this cipher in the encrypted mode and call the do final method here with uh, available in this type object. All right, so uh, let's uh, compile this program. Get compiled and then uh, run this program. So when you run that, this program will read the, this public key certificate file and obtain the public key certificate from that and print that public key certificate on the terminal using this println method, certificate object it printed and using get public key method will obtain the public key. So after that, it asks me to enter a message. You see, enter your message to be encrypted. So maybe I type here, hello. And this is the message, right? So after then it read the message and printed this encoded uh, data on the term. So what's happened? It called the do final method and passed the encrypted data, uh, initialized the cipher in the encrypted mode using the public key and called the do final method of cipher object with this message. It returned the cipher text. So that cipher text will be encoded. So, you know, binary data can be encoded into the uh, encoded method called base64, which is used mainly used by email protocol. So, I use base64 object uh, and then get the encoder of the base64 and call the encode method using this hypertext. So, that binary data will be encoded to the uh, text format. So this base64 encoded cybertext message I just printed on the terminal. So this is the encoded binary cybertext message. So assume that will pass us to the other side. That means yeah, our recipients who wants to decrypt. The recipients has this decryption algorithm and the private key. So the corresponding private key actually store this key is to public keys are in the certificate file right so then i need to decrypt this for that i have to access the keys to file which is in the p12 format as usual i open this file key store file and get the key that is private key using the nickname and the password so it returns the private key so after returns the private key i initialize this cipher in the decryption mode with that private key right so then i need to decrypt that. In order to decrypt that, I have to uh, get the cipher object. So for that, what I do, uh, whoever execute this decryption program should that should pass that string as a command line argument to this decryption program. So then decryption program will take the command line argument zero as a string and get then get bytes out of the string and then call the base64 decoder. So get the base64 decoder object and call the method decoder with this string which passes as the command line object. So that will decode the uh, binary data into the ciphertext. So that only decode. So after that, I have to decrypt. So for that, I call the cipher.dofinal method with the ciphertext data. So then cipher to final method will decrypt that ciphertext back to the plain text. So then I print them on the terminal. Right, now uh, let's compile this program to see how it works. I compile that. Uh, sorry, I made a mistake. So first of all, uh, I need to now run my encryption program right and 
type the message hello cousin so this is my encrypted data now i run my decryption program right i type decryption program and should pass that encrypted data as a command line now we know to my decryption program let's see so you see so this data will be read from the decryption program and it then get decode and then this program access these keys too and get the private key and using that private key that decoded data is was decrypted so and printed on the term so you see it demonstrates how practically we can use public key cryptography to encrypt some message on the recipient side for that recipient need the public key of the uh, sender side so then for the sender need the public key of the recipient to do so so in the format of public key certificate so then the sender will encrypt that message using the public key of recipient so you see that's the demonstrated in this decryption jar program <coughs> after that the message will reach to the uh, recipient in so recipient pass that message to the decryption program and by using his private key recipient will access this message so that uh, shows you how we can use public key cryptography practically to encrypt and decrypt some simple data okay so like that uh, we can access key key stores which created using third party uh, tool like key tool or any third party tool like open ssl i will uh, upload uh, two separate videos where, I did, where we demonstrate how to create such keys tools and the public key certificate using open ssl as well as by using key tool so so those files can be generated with those external tools then we can use uh, the jar program to access these key stores and do our encryption and decryption works practical right so then at last i will show you simple example where how you can access to a uh, tls web server so i have a very simple uh, file uh, called client java which uh, read the first page of any uh, TLS web server. So using this SSL top top class. So you see how it works. So there is a program or client. It use uh, 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 object called socket factory. Socket factory. It's open uh, from this SSL socket factory. Uh, I call the SSL socket factory uh, get uh, methods to get the default SSL socket, right? So and then I create a socket using the argument zero and then second argument, that is the port number. First argument I am passing as the URL and the second I pass as the port number. So it then create a SSL socket, basically connect to the uh, remote web server immediately after these two uh, lines. So then using this, uh, uh, from this SSL software, I can call the get session method and print the session information. So like uh, public keys and then cyber information on the terminal, right? Using print session, I print the session information to show you that the SSL connection is established. So when after establish the SSL connection, I need to, create two buffers, one to write and one to read, right? So where what I do, so I open this uh, buffer reader and print writer to write uh, the data to the buffer socket, plus this is to read the data from the server, right? So then what I do, I print this just on the terminal and using this print writer method, write method, I write a get into this writer. This writer method actually wrap the socket output stream. So S is my socket here, SSL socket. So then 
I take the output stream of this SSL socket and wrap to the print writer. And then I take the input stream of this SSL socket and wrap, wrap to the buffered reader. So that's a uh, buffered reader will be used to read the input stream of socket. PW, the print writer will be used to write to this web server. Right. Using this PW, I do print ln. I just write get root. That means the first page of the web web page, and I flush entire write uh, stream. So it sends send the get method to the web server. After that, in this while loop, I actually read using the read line in a while loop. I read a uh, line by line entire page and print that page on the terminal and close the socket. So using that actually I can print, uh, I can get the page through the SSL. So this uh, uh, print uh, session method, uh, you see I implemented here. So there what I do, I get the host name, Cypher suite name, protocol name, certificate time, and those information I extract from the session I and print on the terminal, right? So let's uh, uh, stop printing the content of the page first and only print the session information to see whether I establish the SSL session to the server. So I change the directory to SSL here and then compile uh this program java uh, c client dot java i don't need bouncy cards in here and then i run java client and then maybe i say uh, www.google.com and default ssl port is 443 when i run that you see it establishes a connection uh to the uh, it established the connection to the SS, uh, Google server. So it returns all the public key certificate of the server here, all the public key certificate chain. So here the place I, uh, I clear the terminal and run that. So it's clear for you, right? And I run that. So you see it says session ID, created time and so on, and then protocol use TLS version 1.2, Cypress suite uses TLS, elliptic curve, Diffie-Hellman key exchange, and the elliptic curve DSA signatures. Uh, the key exchange is elliptic curve based Diffie-Hellman. Uh, uh, signing method it uses elliptic curve D DSA, digital signature algorithm. Encryption is used AES-128 in the GCM mode and the authentic code SHA 256 So all these things even in this cyber suite. So that is the cyber suite or the set of algorithms which you used to, which, uh, which are used uh, to encrypt the sessions between the Google server and this particular client. And the, that protocol Google uses TLS 1.2. And these are the information about public key certificate uh, of uh, Google, uh, so it has several extensions as you see. So valid from valid to issuer is global sign uh, to the Google. Somewhere you should see this is Google. Subject means one of this public key certificate that is Google. And then public information is given here, right? So like that. And then CES certificates also returns like that, all the certificates and the session information. We can uh, get it by calling this print session method. So maybe I can get read the data as well. So I just uncomment that uh, and compile this program and run it back. And I compile this program and run it back again, Google. So you see, uh, it returned the first text page of the Google. Uh, so like that, we can uh, connect, we can write a Java program very simply to connect to a 
SSL server and returns uh, a page from that server. Actually, this program may not do any verification, but if you write a proper program, after you establish the session, you have to verify the public key certificate of the peer and so on, a lot of things to do, but that's not implemented in this simple client. So this simple client uh, shows how to open SSL software to the remote TLS web server. Okay, with that, I have shown you a very rich set of examples, uh, Java cryptographic examples, you know, where you can use for your day-to-day -day applications, implementations. So the, these samples programs I have demonstrated here will upload it uh, to uh, my GitHub registry called Java cryptography. The link I will be given into the LMS. So you can, uh, uh, clone this repository and try those examples and learn how to use Java cryptographic operations for your day-to-day -day activities. Right, thank you very much for following this session so far, this long session. And uh, now it's up to you uh, to listen to those videos and use those samples and learn how to implement cryptographic applications. So those cryptographic operations and application is the must when you want to do secure programming. So without cryptography, you cannot protect the data of your secure programs. So in the, when you do secure software development, you have to protect the software as well as the data which is used in your programs. So in this, Java cryptographic lessons, I demonstrated how to protect the data which is used by the software applications. Right, that's in the session.